Item of business is members' business debate on motion 8105 in the name of Gillian Martin on Global Entrepreneurship Week. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Gillian Martin to open the debate around seven minutes, please, Ms Martin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank my colleagues in the Chamber today for their support for this debate, which marks the return of Global Entrepreneurship Week. I'd also like to thank the hard, hard work of my friends and colleagues from Women's Enterprise Scotland, who lead the way in promoting and supporting women into business, work which they are tirelessly committed to all year round, and each year they go from strength to strength. They're in the gallery today. I convened the cross-party group on women in enterprise, and in the 18 months since we started, we've had tremendous support from a wide range of stakeholders, including Women's Enterprise Scotland, who helped me run the CPG, and I feel that the voices of women in business have been amplified somewhat by our work there. Because it's not just a talking shop, we get things done. Not least, securing funding for supporting women in business through training and mentorship programmes from the Scottish Government. In 2016, WES brought female business owners to Holyrood, where they received training on giving evidence to committees here. And since then, we've met women starting out in business in a number of recent events in Parliament, like the Business in Parliament event last month, and Christine Graham's excellent evening event showcasing the business achievements of army spouses of the Glencorse Barracks in her constituency, as a result of workshops put on by WES. The Economy, Jobs and Fair Work Committee also published a report on the gender pay gap earlier this year, which has become a key indicator of where we currently are and the strides we must take in order to close the gap. But alongside the gender pay gap sits the gender enterprise gap. There is one, and we must, as a matter of economic urgency, get it closed. If we get the same amount of women running businesses as men, the injection into the Scottish economy is significant. It's estimated that an increase is an increase of over 7 billion. That's 5.4% in economic growth. And that's a growth figure that any government minister would be shouting from the rooftops. Following on from that inquiry, into our inquiry in the, Econo uh, the Economy Committee into data, we're identifying that lack of gender disaggregated data only masks the issues further. The scale of the shortfall in women-led businesses, for example, getting business support, needs to be identified, and I'd argue needs to be targeted as we go forward as a matter of urgency. I'm delighted to see so many colleagues in the chamber today because that must mean that you too are also keen to champion the benefits of helping to support and encourage more women into business. And since it's Global Entrepreneurship Week, our goal has to be supporting women-led business to trade and work all over the world. We all know the Scottish Government's uh, strategy, the four I's of innovation, inclusion, investment and internationalisation. Women-led businesses must be included in all of those if Scotland is to fulfil its potential. And if I'm maybe given a wee bit more thought at the time of lodging the motion for this debate, I maybe should have called it inclusion in internationalisation. Maybe next year. Don't anyone pinch that, it's mine. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I had the pleasure of attending the Women's Enterprise Awards in Glasgow, where the keynote speaker was our First Minister. The winners and runners-up of the awards are an inspiration to those who follow in their footsteps. And I say follow, but in reality, what we often hear is that women running businesses are very giving of their expertise and experience to other women, start women starting out. They pull others up behind them. They mentor, they support, and they champion one another. All over Scotland, in Global Entrepreneur Week, there are celebrations of those who are operating abroad from Scotland, and rightly so. But I say this to women in business. Don't look at globally operating businesses and think you'll never get there, that it's for someone else, that it's too hard. Because the women who won those awards the other week were once you. Don't look at their success and think you can't achieve it. Speak to them and ask them. Say, I would like to achieve what you've done. Have you got time to tell me how you did it? Because women will share experience, and gladly. Across the mentoring and support systems that are growing amongst female entrepreneurs, there will be many conversations that revolve around experience sharing that can encourage women who are not already doing so to reach global markets. 
I hope next week in Global Enterprise, Enterprise Week, Entrepreneurship Week, sorry, there will be as many conversations challenging and offering support to business to go global as there will be about revelling in the success of those who have already done so. Anyway, on to the traditional members' debate speech, se speech section where we all get to make a fuss of someone in our constituency, which is my favourite bit. <laughs> I am looking forward hugely to hearing my colleagues use today as an opportunity to champion women-led led businesses in their constituencies, but I'm going to get in first with one of Aberdeenshire East's success stories, right on my doorstep in the wee village of Newmacher, where I live. Eight years ago, Lindsay Ritchie took a part-time course at North East Scotland College to learn how to make kilts. Since then, her passion has turned into a business and she now employs eight staff in the local area and is a fully-fledged global brand with customers all over the world. By the end of this year, her firm, Kilts Wehe, will have achieved a turnover just shy of one million. I've had the pleasure of visiting Lindsay's business both as her MSP and as one of her customers. The way she runs her business is an exemplar of all that I rave on about frequently in this chamber. Those who know me know I never tire of talking about the benefits of flexible working, and this is something that Lindsay says her workplace prides itself upon. It means that she and her other staff can put as much effort and enthusiasm into their business as possible and still arrive on time at the school to pick up their children. The business is all the better for it, and our employees are loyal and committed. Lindsay has become a global ambassador for her business and also for female entrepreneurs, showing that they can spin a sp small idea into their very own brand and do it in a way that fits in with their lives beyond work. There is a map of the world in the packing area of Kilts Wehe, with dots showing where the company has ships, shipped kilts, gifts and accessories. It is absolutely covered in dots. If a small business from Aberdeenshire, tucked away in a B road, beside some fields of horses, can sell kilts and sporans to four continents, any business can. We can all point to reasons why there are not as many women operating globally as their male counterparts, and why not enough women set up in business. But I want to leave that for another day, because today is about encouraging entrepreneurship, recognising that without women we will not hit those, three, those four eyes, and today is about making a right good fuss of the women in our constituencies who are reaching out beyond our borders and making things happen for their businesses across the world. Women who are going, go going global and will help Scotland reach its potential. We move to the open debate. Can I have Alexander Burnett followed by Jackie Bailey. Speeches of around four minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I just start by noting my register of interest, particularly regarding my general involvement uh, with businesses that I've started. So firstly, can I congratulate Gillian Martin for achieving cross-party support for a member's debate on such an important topic. Removing obstacles and ensuring women have the same tools and opportunities as men to flourish in business and beyond is important not only for our economy, but our society too. Indeed, I have seen the impact that empowering women through business can do. For 10 years, I worked out in Azerbaijan and was involved in setting up and supporting many small businesses. One enterprise in particular that I'm proud to have been involved with was the carpet workshop in Azerbaijan's northern region of Guba. This workshop was not only a culturally valuable enterprise, keeping traditional carpet weaving skills alive, but more importantly, it provided a unique refuge for women suffering from domestic abuse. In a country where there is still much progress to be made on women's rights, the enterprise and entrepreneurship of these women was an eye-opening experience and certainly stands out as a project I was proud to be involved with. And whilst the Scottish Conservatives fully support efforts to improve women into business here in Scotland, I am cautious that this does not detract from efforts to improve business startups across other sectors of society. Latest statistics have shown that Scotland has a significantly lower rate of businesses per head of population than the rest of the UK, with the UK sitting at 499 enterprises for every 10,000 adults. Meanwhile, Scotland is lagging behind at 393. And due to the Scottish Government's poor track record, the number of businesses in existence is 27% lower in Scotland than the rest of the UK. So in addition to the motion put forward today, I would call upon the Scottish Government 
to ensure that they review burdens they are putting on businesses which are having an impact on the number of enterprises flourishing. But the best and brightest start out in an integral part of our lives, our education system. And enhancing our education system is the foundation of being able to improve business startups in Scotland. The Federation of Small Businesses is campaigning to have every Scottish school offer specialist courses which teach pupils about running their own business. And with a study by the European Commission, finding that 28% of those who took part in enterprise education wanted to start a business and become an entrepreneur. And I would fully support their campaign. So Deputy Presiding Officer, I'm proud to represent my constituency of Aberdeenshire West for many reasons. And this week, I was delighted to see that Aberdeenshire West has been named by the FSB as one of Scotland's top five most entrepreneurial Holyrood constituencies, containing some of the healthiest local business communities in Scotland. So I will continue to add my support to promoting women in business and look forward to working with members from across the chamber in helping achieve a gender-balanced business society. Thank you. I call Jackie Bailey to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Presiding officer, can I thank Gillian Martin for bringing this debate to the chamber again this year and for highlighting the hugely important work um, that Women's Enterprise Scotland does in promoting and supporting women into business. Um, and as I said last year, it should be our ambition to focus on women's enterprise every day, not just one week of the year. But let me declare an interest, presiding officer, because I'm the deputy convener of the cross-party group on women in enterprise, and I feel privileged to have the opportunity to work with a great number of inspiring women, including, of course, the convener, Gillian Martin, um, and many, many organizations which aim to advance the position of women throughout the business sector. Global Entrepreneurship Week, for me, is about celebrating women and the work of Women's Enterprise Scotland. It is agreed that developing women's enterprise is critically important for Scotland's economy. Currently, just one-fifth of Scottish small and medium-sized enterprises are majority owned by women. These make an important and valuable contribution to our economy, but goodness me, it could be so much more substantial. If the number of women-led businesses in Scotland increased to equal those of men, our economy would grow by a staggering 7.6 billion pounds. Think of how much our economy could flourish with an extra injection of 7.6 billion pounds in the pot. Now, one of those fantastic small enterprises run by women is just up the road here at Cranachan and Crowdy on Canongate. And when I visited last year, I was really inspired by the passion that both Beth and Fiona have for their business. Because not only are they women owners, but the majority of products which they stock are also created by women. And I can recommend, presiding officer, the gin. Whilst businesses like this give us a lot to celebrate, there is still so much more to be done to advance the opportunities for women in business. So we need more than warm words, we need substantive action. And we know that there are real challenges. Research undertaken by Women's Enterprise Scotland shows that gender stereotyping persists around women-owned businesses. 80% of their survey respondents stated that they face specific challenges as women business owners, including achieving credibility for their business. 46% of women-led businesses said they had experienced discrimination. So that's not good enough. And whilst I welcome the efforts of the government and the framework for women's enterprise, we must do more to address these issues. So I would urge the Scottish Government to take on board the recommendations from WES, from the European Institute for Gender Equality, adopt a gender-aware approach to all enterprise and growth policies, as well as introducing gender-specific training and gender-specific business support, because there is a differing nature to women's enterprise. Now, the Minister knows that I like to talk always to him about funding. Um, and this is not going to be any different today um, and about how much we should be providing. And I'm sure the minister absolutely agrees with me that Women's Enterprise Scotland are the acknowledged experts in advancing opportunities for women in enterprise. Yet their women's training and leadership programme, which delivers such positive results, launched in Fife, um, in, with Fife Council in June, receives no Scottish Government funding. I believe that's an oversight. I absolutely do. Um, and if you contrast that with Scottish Enterprise, um, an organisation which receives hundreds of millions of funding from the Scottish Government, 
they were awarded £60,000 from the government to fund a similar programme. Now, I welcome the fact that Women's Enterprise Scotland enjoys other support from the Scottish Government. But, you know, it's a fraction of what's needed. And just think, with their training programme, what you could achieve. Because it's a tested scheme, one which is so successful, presiding officer, that the number of places had to be doubled. So, Minister, it's a good investment. It's nearly Christmas. <laughs> I know you want to do the right thing. So when you leave this chamber, I look forward to you finding that extra bit of money that allows Women's Enterprise Scotland to do so much more. Because, presiding officer, finally, it is only when we do these things and encourage more women into business that we will unlock the huge potential of our economy. £7.6 billion, increasing Scotland's GVA to £13 billion, an increase of 5%. And my final point, presiding officer, at time of economic uncertainty, slowing growth, public sector job cuts. We want more growth, more jobs, more revenue through taxes. It's the right thing to do. Let's support women's enterprise. Even the minister clapped. <laughs> Jenny Go Ruth, followed by Bill Bowman, please. Thank you, presiding officer. And can I start by congratulating my friend and colleague, Gillian Martin, MSP, on bringing Global Entrepreneurship Week to Parliament. Her motion for today's debate rightly focuses on women in business and as entrepreneurs. And here we stand in the national parliament of our country, where 35% of our members are women, aren't we lucky? Where the corporate body, which decides upon the business we debate as MSPs, is comprised of six men. In an institution in which we boast of our progressive commitment to equality on the one hand, but where the average woman's salary in Holyrood is 11% lower than the average man. Where yesterday, this parliament's local government committee met with five male MSPs and me. But today's debate isn't about this place and our lack of direct action to tackle gender inequality. So let's talk about the, uh, the entrepreneurs, let's talk about the women who succeed in business, even when the odds are stacked against them. Figures from the UK Office for National Statistics show that women in Scotland, where average salaries are lower than south of the border, are still being paid on average 15.2% less than men. Uh, this is Fife Council's draft economic strategy for 2017-2027. Uh, I was interested in Jackie Bailey's comments with regard to Fife Council, but there is not a single mention of gender in this document. And as Gillian Martin's motion notes, we need a gender-aware approach to economic development, enterprise and growth policies. In June of last year, women in my constituency had a 10% lower employment rate than Scottish women did nationally. It's clear that Fife Council need to consider gender in their plans for driving economic growth. Later today, I will be writing to the Chief Executive of Fife Council to ensure that they go back and look again at how they adequately address the gendered barriers that women face in terms of accessing work and in terms of starting their own businesses. In 2017, women are still paid less and still find it harder to get into the labour market. I welcome the First Minister's recent announcement of funding to tackle the gender gap in business. And I note that uh, Business Women Scotland's BWS Live Events programme is to receive £60,000 for events across Scotland for networking and support. And I would like to use this opportunity to invite Business Women Scotland to consider Glenrothes or Leaven in my constituency as locations for these future events. Women's Enterprise Scotland have also trained members of staff at Business Gateway Fife on gender balance training. That's welcome, but we could be doing better and I think we could be moving faster in the kingdom. Gillian Martin notes in her motion, if the rates of women-led businesses equaled those of men, the contribution of Scotland's GVA would increase from 7.6 billion to 13 billion, um, as has already been said. More women in business, therefore, is clearly uh, good for business. In my own constituency, I'd like to give a specific mention today to Eden Fife Accountancy, who operate nationally from their headquarters in Glenrothes. Founded in 2007 by Christine Convey, all staff in the company are women. Eden Fife's director, Lisa Bray, works with the Fife Women in Business Networking Group to give women more confidence and more contacts in business. I'd also like to mention the fantastic Leslie Reid, who runs her own business, The Willow and Plum Soap Company. Leslie established her own business in 2013, which specialises in cold-pressed soap using national, uh, natural ingredients which are kinder to skin than conventional soap. Leslie taught herself how to make soap from scratch, and she even managed to train her husband as well. Today, they are a thriving family business who ship their products globally, all from their premises in King Lassie. Business Gateway supported Leslie when she first came up with the idea in 2013, and as Leslie states herself, while very pregnant, they liked the idea, they saw my vision, and I qualified for a Create in Fife fund, which covered my startup costs. Presiding officer, what an accountancy firm and a soap maker share in common is this? 
female ingenuity, that spirit of entrepreneurial aspiration which says, I've got an idea, I'm going to make it happen. There are female politicians who, in this place who later today will work across the party divide to hold this institution to account. The work of people like Leslie Reid and Christine Convey teaches us all irrelevant of your workplace. Women's voices are powerful, they are valid, and that if you truly listen to them, it's not just good for a fairer society, it's good for business. Thank you. Call Bill Bowman to be followed by Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, first of all, allow me to thank Gillian Martin for bringing this debate forward. It gives us an opportunity to show our support for Global Entre Entrepreneurship Week and the work of Women's Enterprise Scotland, both of which I support for the efforts to promote women in business, not just this week, but every week. Each November, entrepreneurial events are held around the world, inspiring millions. It is a little bit disappointing that it appears none are being held in the Northeast this year, but perhaps in the future. With the recent downturn across our region, it would have been a tremendously positive sign to send out to prospective entrepreneurs and investors alike had there been an event. It is perhaps a sign of a larger problem, however, and we must ask ourselves the question, why are more businesses not being formed in Scotland? Certainly part of the solution is to encourage talent and attract more investment. The Scottish Conservatives are dedicated to pro-growth policies, but there are barriers to overcome. Sadly, some are of this SNP government's own making. Increasing taxes and business rates will merely serve to stagnate economic growth and place increasing burdens upon businesses. And it is these barriers facing entrepreneurs which must be tackled. And I say this not to be combative, but in the spirit of wishing to see the best environment possible for small entrepreneurial businesses to grow. Making Scotland the highest tax part of the UK does not create such an environment. Another does complacency about the challenges we face, as we saw from the Economy Secretary Keith Brown's assertion that Scottish growth statistics were good news. Compared to the UK as a whole, Scotland's growth is sluggish, businesses face enormous rates increases, and we only narrowly dodged a recession earlier this year. And it's not just myself and my Scottish Conservative colleagues making these points. Both the IFS and the Scottish Chambers of Commerce have warned about a high tax agenda. These warnings must be heeded if we are to help Scotland's incredible small to medium sized businesses. They made up 99% of Scottish firms last year, helping to drive our economy forward, and we must ensure they can flourish. Now, I acknowledge efforts have been made to offer support. For example, the Unlocking Ambition Challenge, this will support up to 40 budding entrepreneurs each year and help Scotland become a world-leading entrepreneurial nation. And, according to the First Minister, will ensure that the most talented entrepreneurs create the companies we need to grow the economy. But the First Minister must not forget that businesses who have already set up shop in Scotland, though, they are struggling with slow economic growth and business rates and are looking for help, not hindrance. There is little evidence that the Scottish Government's tax hikes will be beneficial to the country. They will have a particularly negative impact upon those looking to start their own business, which is something the First Minister should consider. Where there has been success, we must recognise and encourage it, such as, such as the increase in the number of self-employed women from 76,000 in 2007 to 113,000 this year. This is welcome news and is thanks to the efforts of organisations like Women's Enterprise Scotland who aim to create a commercial culture where women-led business ownership is not simply an aspiration but an achievable goal for women everywhere. Unfortunately, gender imbalance in Scotland is still an issue with men twice as likely to launch their own businesses as women which it is why it's important that women's enterprise are successful in making their efforts a reality for women in Scotland. Their success would benefit the entire country. Scotland's female entrepreneurs boost the economy by 268 million. And as the motion and other speakers have mentioned, if women started businesses at the same rate as men, it could add up to 7.6 billion into the Scottish economy. It is a simple message, but the truths often are more women-owned businesses are good for Scotland. Thank you. Call Ivan McKee to be followed by Kezia Dugdale.
Uh, thank you, President Officer, and I thank Gillian Martin for bringing this debate on Global Entrepreneurship Week to the Parliament, in particular for her focus in this motion on the role of women in enterprise, correctly identified as part of raising levels of entrepreneurship across the economy as a whole. I'd first like to just um, respond to some comments Bill Bowman made. Um, the small business bonus, of course, is enabling 100,000 businesses in Scotland to be lifted out of rates altogether, helping many um, businesses, women-owned businesses included. And, of course, Scotland, with our lower council tax, £400 lower than the UK average, is actually the lowest, not the highest tax, the lowest tax part of the UK. And while the Conservatives might want to focus on the top 10%, that benefit from the tax cuts given down south in Scotland. This SNP government focuses on all business, including small business, and all people, including all those at all levels of the income spectrum. Um, now, moving back to the substantive topic, um, it's estimated that women in Scotland, uh, women in Scotland um, comprise the majority of shareholders and only about 21% of businesses. And this just isn't bad news for equality, it's bad for the bottom line. We can't afford not to fully engage with the talents of half of our population. Studies have shown that women-owned businesses are more resilient in recession and we can help future-proof our economy and create more stable prospects by investing and nurturing women in business. If women started businesses at the same rate of men, as has been heard, this would add another seven billion to the uh, value of Scotland's economy. Um, and I would like at this point to take an opportunity to mention Fona Colburn Brown, who runs East End Connections Business Networking in my constituency, a fabulous initiative that's bringing businesses uh, from all around the East End together to share, um, to share ideas and uh, opportunities. Because business startup requires creativity, seeing opportunities where others don't, and figuring out new ways of meeting demand. And women often bring a different perspective to problems, a different appreciation of market needs, and a different understanding of how to meet them. Women's Enterprise Scotland, the organisation leading the way on this issue, makes some simple recommendations to support and encourage more women-led business startups. Business balance panels and role models are important, along with appropriate imagery and language and advertising. We need to set an example for women and girls, and men have their part to play in delivering this. They can do so by challenging gender stereotype attitudes that restrict the startup and growth of women-led businesses. This will deliver benefits not only here, but in other areas of the economy where gender imbalance is marked. The pay gap is one of the most significant of these. While Scotland's pay gap is significantly below the UK average, the gap is still too high. And much of this inequality is caused by gender stereotypes that help nobody. Many women are still expected to go into the caring professions and men into technical work. Having more women going to STEM subject careers can go a long way to addressing this balance, as can getting more men in traditionally female-dominated jobs, such as care and early learning sectors. The issue of homework balance, including childcare responsibilities, is a fundamental barrier to equality in employment and in running businesses. 8% of women are economically inactive because they're looking after the house and their family, compared to only 1% of men. Redressing that balance, challenging the assumption of women as primary caregivers, will also go a long way to enabling more women to become entrepreneurs. Gabriela Ramos, Chief of Staff at the OECD, named lack of childcare provision as the single biggest barrier to inclusive growth in developed countries. And I'm proud that the Scottish Government has recognised these barriers and is actively trying to break them down by doubling childcare provision in Scotland. I would also like to address um, some comments to the universal basic income and the role it can play in encouraging entrepreneurship. While often cited as a means of tackling poverty in our country, we should not underestimate the potential basic income has to support a new wave of entrepreneurs by de-risking the decision to start up a business for both men and women. But in particular, uh, for women entrepreneurs, as a consequence of the flexible approach to work, a basic income can enable. I'm glad that the Scottish Government has given this some focus to understand how to deploy basic income and I look forward to the assessment of what it could do to boost economic and inclusive growth. In conclusion, presiding officer, a gender balanced economy is a more stable economy, a fairer economy and a more prosperous economy. Inequality hurts us all and we need to engage the talents of all of our citizens, men and women, to take part in our economy to the fullest extent. Uh, the last of the open debate contributions is Kezia Dugdale.
Thank you, President Officer. And like uh, colleagues, can I pay tribute to Gillian Martin for hosting today's debate, but also for the consistency with which she comes to this chamber to highlight uh, the role of women in business and indeed her unstinting commitment to gender equality throughout her life, a life that brought her to this place. Equally, can I uh, congratulate everyone involved in Global Entrepreneurship Week and all of those people involved in Women Enterprise Scotland. Uh, like so many issues affecting women, this fundamentally boils down to two things, an injustice about women's inability to fulfil their potential and the missed economic opportunity. Those arguments have been uh, well rehearsed in this chamber by other speakers uh, already today. Uh, I've been angry enough on behalf of my gender uh, this week, presiding officer, so I'd like to spend the rest of the time I have in this debate celebrating uh, some particular women in business. And it's been a real uh, privilege and pleasure for me to uh, travel the country as leader of the Labour Party and meet women in business. And I want to talk uh, specifically about some of those women that I met along the way and using Gillian Martin's uh, words to make a right good fuss of a few of those women that I met along the way. Gillian also encouraged us to think about the words inclusion and internationalisation and it's those words which apply to the four women that I'm going to mention. Uh, first of all, uh, earlier this week I had the great privilege of hosting the Social Enterprise uh, Awards uh, in the Parliament and I was quite struck by how many women are involved in social enterprises that are not only businesses but contributing back to their communities. My favourite one of those is Comas who run the Serenity Cafe just around the corner. Ruth Campbell is a huge social innovator leaving her civil service career behind to set up a social enterprise that provides work and employment opportunities for Edinburgh's drug and alcohol recovering community. They also do a project in the Dumby Dykes across the road trying to increase the incomes of some very vulnerable and disadvantaged people there. Something that couldn't be more different than that is Jane McMinn, who runs the lobster hatchery in North Berwick. She is single-handedly uh, <laughs> providing sustainable lobsters in the North Sea, from which we can all enjoy uh, the fruits of her labour in, in North Berwick. And she was a skipper before she went into business, so she really is quite an inspirational uh, woman. From those examples of inclusion, people that provide employment in their own local communities, it's worth moving to the internationalisation agenda. And the two women I want to mention here come from the Western Isles. If you think about uh, the challenges that, uh, that people in the Western Isles face, I'm often reminded of Peter May's works and his novels where he uh, tells us all how the uh, adversity of the land in the Western Isles forces people to be more creative with their outlooks. And two of the women that I met there were our inspirational figures, not least Rona uh, MacDonald, who runs Charlie Barley's Black Pudding, uh, an expert which we, I'm sure we've all appreciated in our time. It's exported into some of the finest restaurants in London and indeed around the world. Separately from that, I think it's worth recognising the work of Margaret McLeod, who is the brand development manager for Harris Tweed. I spent a, a day with her in the Western Isles. She even let me had a go on the mill, but I don't think the fruits of that labour will uh, ever leave the Western Isles. So there are four examples of inspirational women succeeding in business that I'm sure that we can all learn from, presiding officer. I could go on, I could mention people like Jackie Gale, who is the chief executive officer of Aran Aromatics, who's taken a product produced in Aran and taken it all around the world to Japan, where it's sold and provided in some of the most exclusive hotels. But I will stop and say I'm delighted to participate in this debate, delighted to spend a week celebrating the work of women in business. And I know that everyone in this chamber will uh, take part in that celebration, but then redouble their efforts to get back to the business in supporting women in business. Thank you. And I call on Jamie, Jamie Hepburn to conclude this debate. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, uh, President Officer. And uh, can I join with others in thanking uh, Gillian Martin for, for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Can I also probably pass on a thanks from my officials for giving us a, a year's heads up as to what her uh, subject matter will be uh, next year that can get preparing uh, nice uh, and early. But can I also uh, thank uh, her, and I should thank Jackie Bailey uh, as well as the convener and deputy convener of the, uh, the cross-party group in Women uh, in Enterprise. Thank uh, both of them for all uh, they do in respect of uh, of that uh, important area of work. Uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week is, uh, of course, uh, very welcome, and it is right uh, and justifiable that we have uh, this uh, debate today. It was, of course, designed to, to get people to think about uh, taking the ideas they have uh, and making them a reality to help drive uh, our economy, to help drive social uh, improvements. It's obviously designed to connect people together uh, in terms of collaboration, in terms of uh, mentorship, in terms of uh, investment uh, opportunities. So it is, of course, a, an important uh, initiative generally. But as we've debated previously in this specific context and in many other contexts in, part, uh, in relation to parts of our 
economy. It's especially important for us to reach out to those who are underrepresented in all parts of our economic activity, and that, of course, has to include uh, entrepreneurship. So uh, I very much welcome the terms of Gillian Martin's motion uh, in focusing uh, the debate, uh, particularly in relation to uh, female entrepreneurship. Uh, the, uh, a gender gap exists uh, in enterprises not in question. Um, currently, only uh, around 20 per cent, a fifth of Scotland's small and medium enterprises are women-led, uh, and, and men are almost twice as likely to start businesses as uh, women. Ivan McKee was uh, quite correct, uh, as others uh, said, that this uh, represents a huge uh, waste of uh, potential and a huge loss to Scotland's economy and society. We are uh, working uh, to change that, and I'll come to talk a little bit about that in a few uh, moments. But as um, uh, I should do, I should try and pick up on as many uh, contributions made over the course of the debate, presiding officer, as, as uh, I can. I think the first thing I should say is I was delighted to hear about the range of uh, activity, good activity happening in local areas and indeed across the country. Uh, members, I think all members virtually, uh, none more so than Kezia Dugdale, I should say, who I think finagled a, a reference to every part of the country virtually into her contribution. Um, but it, it is well worth putting that on record. And if there's particular activity that um, uh, individual members think I would benefit by going to, to visit and see, then I'm very happy to, to receive such a, a, an invitation. Um, and having mentioned Kezia Dugdale, I think it was a very useful and salient reminder to mention the Serenity Cafe in particular, because we do tend to think, and there's nothing wrong with us, of course, thinking of entrepreneurship in terms of commercial activity, but it isn't always about there's also um, a tremendous amount of entrepreneurial activity around creating social capital uh, as well. And um, uh, she may like to know, uh, not in the, this context, as part of Living Wage Week, I was uh, delighted to go visit one of the the winners of uh, an award, uh, uh, the uh, Grass uh, Market uh, Community uh, Project, who won an award uh, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, picking up on uh, Alexander Burnett's uh, contribution, uh, can I say I, I thought it was very welcome he brought an internet, because this is, of course, an, a, a, a global uh, week. I thought it was very uh, welcome he brought an international uh, perspective to uh, the debate. Um, I cannot promise to visit Azerbaijan, I should say, but uh, I thought it was uh, useful uh, to have uh, that brought to the debate. In terms of his uh, specific suggestion about, uh, from the Federation of Small Businesses, uh, in terms of classroom uh, activity, I mean, clearly we're not going to sit here and direct what should happen uh, in each specific classroom. What I can say, though, is that there is uh, the opportunity for us to better influence that through the developing the young workforce activity that we're taking at uh, the length and breadth of the country, bringing uh, employers across all sectors uh, closer to the uh, school environment. And I think that represents an opportunity to take forward some of uh, that work. Uh, Ivan McKee and Jackie Bailey both spoke about gender stereotyping, which is uh, an issue right across uh, economic activity and clearly filters through to this specific uh, area of entrepreneurial uh, activity. We are working to challenge that. It is, uh, I think we would all accept a, a long-term uh, activity because gender stereotypes are so well ingrained. I've made the, the point before, even all of us in this uh, chamber who I think are working to challenge those gender stereotypes will ourselves be susceptible uh, to, from time to time, uh, unconsciously uh, reinforce them. So we always need to challenge ourselves uh, as well as uh, others to, to step up the mark. But in respect of economic activity, uh, the Scottish Funding Council has a gender action plan. Skills Development Scotland has its equality action plan with a specific uh, commitment within that to uh, better balance uh, modern apprenticeship frameworks. Uh, some progress has been made, more has to be made. And uh, of course, my colleague Shirley Ann Somerville just a couple of weeks ago launched the STEM strategy and a hugely important uh, part of that uh, uh, area of activity is around challenging gender stereotyping there, which is, I think, uh, important to this particular debate because we know uh, that it's the area of STEM, uh, there's much creativity, much uh, uh, happening there, uh, and that is, of course, a critical part of entrepreneurial activity, the creation of new uh, ideas. Uh, Jackie Bailey um, uh, tried to invite me to an early Christmas. I should say my children are already badgering me about Christmas, so why shouldn't uh, members of the Scottish Parliament start to do so? Uh, as well. Uh, I can't quite say I'm going to give her a Christmas present here and now, but what I will say is um, that is uh, an area of 
Uh, I've not brought my Santa suit, Ms Bailey, so I'm not going to be Santa uh, today. Uh, but what I can say is it sounds like a, a very worthy project, and if uh, she would like to provide more details, I'm very willing to, to, to look at that uh, particular uh, area and see if there's more uh, we can uh, do. Uh, and one area I must touch on was uh, Bill Bowman's uh, point about welcoming the rise in self-employment activity. Um, I do welcome that cautiously because I think a number of us would accept that there has been a number of reasons that have driven a rise in self-employment, some of it very positive, and that's what we're debating today, but we've also seen some changes, some emergent changes in our economy in recent times, which have probably also led to an increase in self-employment that's not so positive because it is driving people to forms of employment where they don't have uh, the full benefits and protections that someone in a traditional form of employment would be, and that's something that our labour market strategy uh, uh, is focusing on in the strategic labour market group that I chair is uh, focusing on uh, as well to better understand. Uh, I've taken more time than I, I meant to respond to everyone's contribution, so uh, I should probably close by saying that um, there is a range of activity underway through our framework. I will shortly be uh, taking forward an action group to uh, further embed the work that we can take forward so that we can bring forward new ideas, continue to build on what we uh, take forward. But I am very delighted that we've had this debate. I should, of course, uh, quickly uh, thank, because I know there are representatives here, Women's Enterprise Scotland, for all they do as well. They will be a part of that action group. They are a fantastic organisation. I've been happy to work with them in the past. We're happy to work with them again going forward. But uh, let us uh, commit to returning to this subject matter, yes, on an annual basis, uh, and it's clear that um, Ms Martin has, has uh, grasped the market in this regard. I'm sure it'll be her members' debate again uh, next year. But I do agree with the point that was made, I think, by Jackie Bailey, that let's commit ourselves not just to having this uh, debate once a year. We should be thinking about this subject matter on a regular basis. I commit myself to that, and I'm very happy to work with members of the length and breadth of uh, this chamber across all parties towards that end. Thank you very much, President Officer. That concludes the debate and the meeting is suspended until 2.15.